arcade heroes. Hey everyone, this is Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com, and today I am tackling a subject that keeps popping up in comments on my videos, and particularly unboxing videos, and that is where do I buy these arcade machines if I want to buy them for my house? And it's a good question, and so uh, let's tackle it. And now, if you are a regular reader of ArcadeHeroes.com, then it is possible that you're familiar with this. Um, but if you're mainly just watching the video channels, uh, maybe not. And so, uh, granted, it is mis a mystery to a lot of people who like come into my arcade and they'll ask me the same questions like, where do you get these? Where do you buy these from? Since they're not at Walmart or Target or Costco or any place like that. And so um, to answer that question, first we need to determine, well, what kind of game do you want exactly? Because that uh, will change how it goes. So first off, let's start with classic arcades. Now, classic arcades would be anything that isn't manufactured anymore from the perspective of the industry, but uh, generally speaking, people are going to think of games from the 80s and from the 90s, maybe from the early 00s, but uh, not so much, as there, there wasn't a ton of releases then, but still, you, you want Pac-Man, you want Donkey Kong, you want Frogger, you want something like that. Now, of course, there are emulation machines out there which do get into a bit of a gray area legally, and so I won't touch those. I'm just going to talk about actual arcade originals, stuff that you would find in a venue like mine where people are coming in to put coins into them, or these days, swipe a card, but uh, <laughs> putting coins into them to play them for a time, and you want that experience in your house. So obviously there's the arcade one-ups out there which are available in different retail stores but they're not quite the same as the original thing and especially when it comes to certain games that had unique controllers although I've seen that arcade one-up has done a good job on things like Star Wars and uh, they've got the Big Buck Hunter game out now and so they're uh, doing what they can to uh, rival a real arcade I suppose but even then the pricing on brand new arcade machines is going to be astronomically higher than that, but also some of the originals that you might want uh, can have unique controls of their own that may not ever end up in the arcade one-up realm. Like, I don't know if Afterburner ever would with its uh, cool flight stick controller and all that. But anyways, so where do you find classic games if that's what you're looking for? Well, the first place to look would be a local classifieds website. Craigslist is probably the first one a lot of people go to, but you can get uh, weird results from there. Uh, a lot of newspapers, if there still is one in your area, may still operate classifieds that uh, people use uh, here in Utah. There's a couple that do one in particular that I've used a few times and had pretty good success with as well. And, uh, and that's all in finding classic machines. Once in a while, maybe something newer shows up on that one. Um, there's eBay, there's Amazon, of course, but I, at least in my experience, I, I've never bought a full machine off of one of those uh, sites. I've bought uh, PCBs or the circuit boards that can go into an existing cabinet um, that's usually less risky and costs a heck of a lot less on shipping. But um, full cabinets, I mean, it can be done. You just have to keep in mind that whole part about shipping, and I'll get into that, to that later. Uh, but yeah, you might be able to find something there that's rare that uh, you wouldn't find otherwise going around locally. Uh, and another solution is to go to a local arcade if there is one. Uh, in some areas they might be like newspapers and just uh, not around anymore, but um, most major cities do have an arcade or two or three or four or more uh, in them and around those parts. but. Um, yeah, you can go to a local arcade, look around at what they have, and ask them. It's like, hey, are you guys selling any of these? I get that all the time. Now, keep in mind that if you ask for something that is really popular, like Miss Pac-Man or Donkey Kong, uh, Street Fighter 2, maybe the old Ninja Turtles, or 
the Adams Family Pinball. But these are all ones that I've constantly had people ask about if I would sell them. Uh, I tell them no, and that's because people still play them. And out of the classics that I have, they get played a lot more than others. Now, if they asked about, say, Knights of the Round, it's like, well, that one doesn't get played as much as uh, Miss Pac-Man, so it wouldn't be as missed. And so, sure, I'll sell that one. But uh, the problem with something like Miss Pac-Man, if I sold it, is as soon as I did, somebody would be asking me, what happened to it? Uh, why don't you have it? And then I'd have to go and find another one anyways. And so that just kind of makes it a little pointless, especially if I end up having to pay more. Uh, to get the same game back in here. And so mileage will vary on uh, classic arcades and uh, finding them in those situations. Now, what about brand new machines? Let's say you're loaded and uh, throwing seven, 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars at a machine is uh, up your alley. And uh, there are a lot of people that uh, do that that are in that class. Um, I, when I sold arcade machines, I sold a lot into homes. And now most of them that I sold uh, were Golden Tees or Pac-Man arcade parties at the time. Now it would be Pixel Bash. Uh, those are about three, four thousand dollars each. But once in a while, we get a call from uh, maybe an agent representing uh, somebody in Hollywood or um, something along those lines, where. You know, they had money and they wanted to have a full-on arcade in their mansion game room and that's just fine so can you buy those machines yes but uh, going through the routes that work for classic arcades are probably not going to work out for buying brand new machines and so or even machines that may not be newer but are a few years old uh, already and no longer a big manufacturer and so uh, what is used by op arcade operators like myself to get machines are what are called distributors. And distributors are essentially middlemen that uh, will send the order from the customer to the manufacturer. The manufacturer gets the game ready or games and sends that to the clients. Now of course the distributor does more than just send orders. Uh, they'll arrange shipping, they'll deal with uh, the shipping insurance and if there's any damage to the machine, and I'll talk about that when we get into shipping, and uh, they'll deal with tech support and all that. And so distributors, um, while many in recent times have been questioning why should we even have distributors, um, they do lighten the load a bit on what manufacturers have to deal with because um, otherwise they would it, it becomes a, a little bit overwhelming for them to have to deal with all of those issues when they may just want to be focusing on developing games and developing um, or producing those games as opposed to meddling with all the sales stuff and minutia that goes on there. Um, but that said, there are some rare instances where you can buy a game directly from a manufacturer um, that don't expect it from Rothreels or Sega or Namco or any company like that. They will just tell you to go to a distributor and they may have a recommended distributor for you to go to, but um, those exceptions come from indie games. And so stuff like Sky Cursor, Cosmotrons, Killer Queen, um, oh, the red, oh, actually not Retro Raccoons. Uh, but uh, most indie games uh, are sold direct to customers and they might have something on their website. I have seen instances where they don't. Um, but I've also seen where some of these indies are able to get on the websites for some distributors and so that also might be a way to go if you want to. Um, the X Arcadia right now is mainly sold um, direct as well. And so, uh, yeah, it just, again, depends on what machine it is that you're looking to get. Uh, one other question on brand new games before I get into who's who of the distribution side of things as well as shipping is um, are all games available for home users to get? And the answer to that is probably 98% are, but there are a couple of machines that are not. Now of course one of the videos that has produced this question more than any other is uh, Maximum Tune 5 by Bandai Namco. Uh, that particular game is not available for home users at this time and that's because it does have an internet connection requirement as well as a fee per seat and so uh, generally they just won't accept a home user in being able to get that I mean I don't know maybe you could try and ask and see if they would be willing to if you're willing to pay 
um, those fees and whatnot, but uh, most likely the answer is no. And uh, that also applies to Golden Tea Live and the online commercial version of Big Buck Hunter. Uh, but both of those particular games do have offline or uh, special home editions that do have some online features, they just don't have all of the tournament prize features that the online commercial ones do. So you would get essentially the same game. It would just be if you want to compete for cash, you need to go out to your local bar or arcade to play those games. But otherwise, when you get a brand new machine into your house, they have free play modes once the game's set up then you just go into the menu set it to free play then all you have to do is push start or if you do want to charge for it if uh, you want to recoup your investment and use them as big piggy banks uh, you can do that too uh, if you really want to or if you're just setting up an arcade a commercial arcade uh, like what we do here you need to go to a distributor for most of those needs now who's who of the distribution side of the business um, I'll use the directory on ArcadeHeroes.com where uh, it's under links on the site and if you scroll down a little bit it will come to Arcade Distribution Parts and Repair. And so um, well, some of these are parts companies so I won't focus on those but uh, for those that do sell machines to both residential and commercial users um, well, the first one I'll mention because they are an advertiser on the site is Primetime Amusements. And, uh, or I guess I, before I get into all these, uh, is that most distributors these days no longer have stock and no longer have showrooms. Uh, there might be a few that do, I believe Primetime does, uh, through their Extreme Action Park facility. But uh, for the most part, if you called up a distributor and say, hey, do you guys have a showroom? Most likely they'd say no. Uh, and, and so, the answer to well, where do I want, where do I go to see these games, especially in this age where most trade shows have been canceled? Um, I would, they would probably recommend uh, if you have a Dave and Buster's or around one USA near you, then a lot of those facilities will have some newer games. They won't have all of the newer games, but that's pretty much the closest you can get to having showrooms. And so, how distributors work, as I mentioned, uh, they are. They'll have the websites, they'll have the games that are available, but oftentimes they need to um, check with the manufacturer on availability on a frequent basis to find out what is still available and keep their websites up to date in that regard too. So, sorry about that little tangent, but uh, so back to the companies that are um, going to be uh, the distributors and for their websites, most of the time it's just their name.com. A uh, few might be exceptions to that, or you can just type their name into a search engine and there you go. And most of these, I believe, will handle sales nationwide. I really don't know of anybody that will say no. Yeah, like, uh, there's one called Game Exchange of Colorado. I'm pretty sure they'll sell to places in Maine or Florida. You know, they don't have a facility nearby for service in, in these instances, but most of these places will have some sort of technical support department uh, where they'll have a technician that can, you can talk to via email or chat or on the phone uh, to help with any issues that you come across. One nice thing is when you do have arcade machines in your home, they don't tend to break down as often as they would in a situation that's like a commercial uh, arcade where the game's being played every day. And so they, they do tend to last longer, but you still always expect to come across issues eventually. So anyways, uh, Primetime Amusements, they're uh, again a paid advertiser on the site. Uh, there is Action Pinball and Amusement, although I think they're mainly parts, but they have sold machines before. Uh, there's Amusement Source International. Uh, there's Arcade Direct, which is UK based. There is Betson, and they're one of the bigger ones in the United States, and uh, Rothrills works with them a lot. Uh, there is CoinOp Express. This is one that I've heard a lot of people go to. I believe they're based out of Hong Kong, uh, but I've, I've heard that people have been able to buy machines and have them shipped overseas. Uh, but uh, that is one area where I'm not really an expert. I have bought some circuit boards uh, overseas, but I've never bought a full cabinet. And so I can't really speak to how that experience goes. Uh, from what I've heard is most of the time if uh, somebody's interested in trying to get like a Japanese candy cab or a specific game that's um, 
developed uh, over in Japan, then they may have to get with some other operators to buy a full container, one of those 40 foot containers that uh, you see on ships. Uh, or if you have the money, uh, you might be able to, to buy enough if you have a contact with a distributor over in Asia, like CoinOp Express. Um, there is ElectroCoin, which is set up in the UK as well, and I believe they cover all of Europe. Uh, there's Game Exchange of Colorado, which I mentioned, uh, Game Room Guys, uh, Gold Coast International, uh, Great American Pinball, Highway Games. Highway Games is based out of Australia. I think they also might go by Highway Entertainment. And uh, there is Marco Specialties, who I do think they sell some pinball machines, but they're mainly parts. Uh, MNP Amusements, Moss Distributing, uh, Pinball Sales, the Pinball Company, uh, Player One Amusement Group, and they have a website that's kind of odd. It's like p1ag.com uh, or win with p1 or win with player one, something like that. So they might be easier to find if you do a search on Google. Um, Schaefer Distributing, TNT Amusements, they mainly deal with old games. And most distributors do not deal with classic arcade games. And that's why I didn't mention them in that part, is just because most of them just don't touch it. I mean, once in a while they might come across some used games, um, but it's hit and miss as to who stocks used games. Uh, there's uh, UDC, which is also based in the UK and covers most of Europe. And then Zach's Amusements, which is uh, mainly just Australia. And so uh, those are some of the distributors. If there's any out there that uh, I missed, I do apologize. Uh, but uh, usually typing in arcade sales or something like that, uh, it'll pop up. Oh yeah, um, there is um, Planet Arcade. Uh, he's based out of Columbia. So I'm sorry, I almost forgot you there, Luis. Uh, he's an old friend of mine. Uh, who, he does uh, distribution in Latin America for a lot of things. And so, or Planet Arcade or Planet Arcade, one of the two. And so, uh, uh, he's also one to check out. So to wrap this up, one of the things to talk about is shipping. And so if you're getting a classic game locally, then most of the time you're expected to just pick up the game yourself and load it into your truck, whether that's a truck you already have or a U-Haul or a Penske truck that you've rented, uh, and then take it to, home, to your house and install it yourself. Um, if you're buying a brand new game, then usually that has to ship out of state and it'll ship via freight. Um, what freight it'll ship through really depends on the company and who they use for that and oftentimes uh, distributors do have multiple options to choose from and so they'll they'll get bids from different companies on shipping and oftentimes maybe they'll go with the lowest or maybe they'll go with the second lowest as sometimes the lowest gives you what you pay for um, and, but if you want to get somebody that's at a higher bid because they guarantee a higher quality on their shipping services, you can do that. Um, but there's usually two types of shipment to um, also think about as uh, curbside with liftgate and inside delivery. Just note that inside delivery is a lot more expensive, especially if you have stairs, uh, or if you were buying something enormous like a shuffleboard, like a 22-foot shuffleboard, um, they may have to pull out the windows, they may have to rent a crane, so that can cost several thousand dollars to get that uh, into a house in that particular situation. That's something I remember from when, back when I was selling games. Um, but uh, one other really important note is that when you are dealing with freight, then you get a game, inspect it. Do not sign for it if it is damaged. If you do that, then you're out of luck because the insurance will not cover it. And so um, inspect it, talk with the shippers if it is damaged, call your distributor immediately if it's damaged, and they can work it out. But if, um, again, don't sign for it if it's damaged. Now, uh, another thing that becomes confusing for some people when they're looking to get an arcade machine for their home is financing. So let's say you don't have all the money to buy that machine right up front. Well, um, financing, well, from my experience, most distributors do not offer any kind of residential customer finance deals. And so, like, sometimes you'll see distributors promoting, like, uh, get uh, this machine for 36 months, 0% APR, whatever. Um, that's not available for you unless you are going to be putting this into a business or you are registered as a business and, and doing it that way. Um, 
so in that instance you'll have to try and go to your own bank or another local bank credit union something and see if they'll give you a uh, loan for that but uh, that is something that throws some people off when they're shopping around distributor websites as uh, they'll often see finance stuff because but it's not meant for them one last thing to mention in terms of uh, purchasing is that uh, some people may just want to rent a machine like say rent some games out for a weekend or something like that um, Rentals do not exist on a nationwide basis. There's no company, no distributor that's able to offer rentals over the enormous geographic area of the United States. Uh, and even in uh, a lot of other countries, it's uh, going to be tough to find somebody that may offer rentals. Of course, if it is a smaller geographic country, then the geography is not going to be the issue, just whether or not anybody actually does that kind of business is uh, so like I have no idea if there's anybody in Luxembourg that uh, does rentals on machines but in the United States or, or Canada uh, it's just not something you're gonna come across except for maybe some local companies now oftentimes there are what are called arcade operators so when you see machines that take coins like crane machines maybe video games or uh, merchandiser games at a gas station or a movie theater or in the lobby of a restaurant oftentimes these are handled by these uh, small business owners called arcade operators and sometimes on those machines they'll have stickers with phone number and it'll say maybe for service or for sales call this number um, you could contact somebody like that if you see anything like that in your area but what they might have available may not be what you want um, and also if you want a brand new machine to rent out um, you're going to pay a lot for it and it almost makes sense for you to buy the machine in some instances that I've seen for how much some companies may want to charge on rentals. Now of course older games um, you know, if, if you're just trying to get a Miss Pac-Man or something like that as long as the operator has it then um, that, that shouldn't cost a whole lot but um, just keep in mind that you may not be able to find the games that you want uh, for rent either. Uh, you can also check with the local arcade, um, especially now in the COVID times. Uh, there have been uh, some arcades that have been uh, adapting their operations so they, where they can't open their doors to the public, where they'll rent machines out to people at home. And so I've heard of a few people doing that. And so you can check into that, that might have something that fits what you're looking for a little better. But just know that rentals overall are a little bit difficult to come across and uh, you may not always find what you're looking for. Uh, so I think that covers all the bases on purchasing and shipping arcade machines. Uh, just use a search engine, take your time on stuff, research sellers, um, research reputations, all that stuff, and you can figure it out. Um, I'm not currently in the market of uh, selling machines. I, I don't currently work for a distributor. Again, I used to, but um, put that a few years back, and so. Um, People send me emails all the time that misunderstanding, thinking that I am working for a distributor or something as Arcade Heroes, but Arcade Heroes is a news blog. But um, yeah, uh, feel free if you have any other questions that I didn't address, uh, ask in the comments below. And thanks for watching, we'll catch you on the next video.